Hi everyone and welcome back to a new video on the how to make a similar game series. So before we start this video, I want to let you guys know that I have a Patreon. So if you guys want to support me and want to have access to every single one of my tutorial files, they will all be available on my Patreon in the $10 tier. With that being said, let's start. So in the past tutorials, I've showed you guys how to make a capacity system, a backpack system, and how to make a shop. It doesn't work right now because this uh, this is not uh, fixed yet. But you can still open the shop from here and you can buy different items. And it works just fine. But one thing that does not work fine is the fact that when you buy an item and you are cur currently holding it, you get another one. And now you have two items in your inventory at the same time. And if I equip the old one, uh, I already have it, so it's still here. And we're going to be fixing this bug and hopefully get started on the backpack shop. And now let's work on how to fix the shop. So firstly, I'm going to fix this where it does not open the shop. And to do that, it's very, very simple. I'm just going to go to GY Manager and actually main client and i'm going to go to open shop remote main ss dot frames dot shop dot visible yeah visible is equal to true and now if i go ahead and play the game that bug should be fixed so if i just clean up the output and touch the shop it opens up the shop and it works just fine, even with two players, so it won't open the shop for two players. I mean, for all of the players in the server. But now, what we're going to be working on is fixing the shop. So, first I'm going to delete this test frame right here, which is not really used for anything. And I'm going to remove both of these uh, buttons. And I'm going to center these to things they're already centered so we don't need to center them again so what, what you're gonna have to do is go to your remote controller module and when we buy a tool what we're gonna be doing is using something called humanoid con unequip tools to do that whenever it has this equip function in here Whenever we are equipping the tool, just add this. So, character, uh, player, let's firstly have a variable for the character. So, in here, I'm going to create a variable. So, local character is equal to character uh, is equal to player dot character or nil. Now, in here, we're going to check if character is not equal to nil then actually let's cut this and paste it here so whenever we are equipping the tool paste this in so just do this and put an end and copy all of this and paste it here now i'm going to obviously return equipped here and what I'm going to be, to be doing now uh, is uh, just do character on find first child humanoid on unequip tools. Now you're going to want to copy this and do it for each time we equip the tool. So here and add the end. And do it again here and add the end and select everything and go to format document format selection now I'm going to play the game and see if we still have that bug we shouldn't so let's just equip our sword and go to the shop and buy another sword so it unequips our sword first and then equips the new sword and with that, we just fixed the annoying bug. 
And now what I'm going to do is just delete all of the prints that we have, which were for fixing a bug, I think. So I'm just going to del delete all of those prints. And that's pretty much it. Delete this too. And delete this too. And now we're going to be working on the backpack shop. So right here inside of our frames uh, shop, I'm going to make sure that the shop is visible. And by the way, sorry if I have some weird studio layout. Let me just fix this real quick. Let me just remove the tag editor and make the output smaller. And I'm going to make the shop visible. And I'm going to add a button, so add a text button in here. And I'm going to change the size of this text button to 0 0.1, 0, 0.1, Now that should make it fairly small, so just scale it up to whatever size you want. I'm going to make it a square, so I'm just going to make it this big. And I'm going to have two buttons, so the first one which is this one, I'm going to rename to select tools and du duplicate it and rename the duplicated one to select uh, storage. Now I'm going to change to add a UI corner to it, to both of these and change this to point one and I'm going to change the text of the first text button text scale true and the text to tools or maybe swords and I'm going to have the text of the select storage uh, button to say storage text scale true and now that we have both of those buttons I'm going to script them so main client and or actually yeah, main client. So right here, when we are referencing our buttons, I'm going to do a local select tools is equal to shop common wait for child select tools. Now I'm going to have a variable select um, storage. And I'm going to have those equal to shop only way for child select storage. Now what I'm going to be doing is scripting those. So I'm going to add a mouse button one click event. So select uh, tools dot mouse button one click. Only connect function. And I'm going to have another event select uh, storage this time dot mouse button one click Point connect function and I'm going to code the first one so let's add a duplicate this scrolling frame and rename it to uh, scrolling frame underscore storage and rename the other scrolling frame scrolling frame underscore tools now I'm going to go back to my main client script and I'm going to go to scrolling frame. So I think it's here. If I can find it, uh, scrolling frame, scrolling frame, where is it? How is it not here? Okay, that's weird. So I'm just going to go to UI or script menu and find scrolling frame. Okay, so temp.parent is equal to shop.scrolling frame. So I'm going to make this a variable. So local scrolling frame tools is equal to shop common wait for child scrolling frame tools and then local scrolling frame storage is equal to shop common wait for child scrolling frame uh, storage 
Now I'm going to copy this and scroll all the way down to this. And I'm going to change this to scrolling tools, scrolling frame tools dot template. And I'm going to change this to. And now if I just uh, close this tab and go here, I'm going to make the scrolling frame tools dot uh, visible is equal to false um, i mean true and scrolling frame storage dot visible is equal to false now i'm going to copy this and invert it so the tools one will be not visible and the other one will be visible but now i want to make it so that whenever you select the storage we will change the selected temp value uh, to nil and after doing that what i'm going to do is add another variable called local selected temp uh, storage and we're going to set that to nil and then right here i'm going to set the selected temp storage and I'm going to make it to set it to nil. Now, if I play the game, I should be able to select either swords or actually, yes, swords and storage. Now we have nothing in the storage tab, so we're not going to see anything. And what I'm going to be doing right now is go into modules, open shop, uh, and I'm going to add a module script called storage config. And or actually, instead, I'm going to remove this module, this storage config module, and I'm going to go to replicate a storage shared and items or let's add a folder called storage and I'm going to add a string value to it or maybe a hmm let's make it a string value yes and I'm going to rename this one or instead let's make it a folder so add another folder rename it to storage one for example and I'm going to add a string value to it or yes yeah, string value and i'm going to set the to rename this to uh, stats and this is going to, the value of the stats string value will be how much uh money does it uh, i mean how much storage does it give so the default one is 20 so i'm going to make this one 40 and I'm going to add a, another string value for the price. I'm going to rename this to price. And I'm going to set it to, for example, 25 points. And I'm also going to add a string value to it. And I'm going to rename it to currency. And this will be what currency is needed to purchase this uh, storage. And it will be, of course, uh, coins. And if it's Robux, change this to Robux, but we're not going to be doing that yet because in the in the upcoming tutorials on this series, I'll show you guys how to make an infinite storage game pass to this game. And so until that video comes out, I'm going to keep this as coins. And now we're, I'm going to have another string value and it will be the image. So string value and image id or let's actually rename this to uh storage icon so that it, the script doesn't confuse it with the property image id and i'm going to go to images and i'm going to find a backpack icon so let's see if I can find a nice looking backpack icon. Probably not. Actually, yes. So copy asset ID and I'm going to paste it here. 
and now that should be good i think or actually let's change this to copy asset url if that's a thing and no it's not so i think what we're going to be doing now is just scrolling up let's zoom out and loop through also i forgot to add another an int value to this as an int value and rename it to order this will not work right now but we'll get it to work in the next episodes so I've set the order to one and i think this is going to be it for today's tutorial and i think in the upcoming tutorials i think in the next tutorial i'm going to be showing you guys how to make this shop actually work which will be much more complicated than this. And yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. And if this video was helpful, please make sure to subscribe and like the video and share it with your friends. And if you guys want to support me on Patreon, the link will be in the description. And yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.